What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to extend out our registration form, add some fields, for a blog with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to extend out our registration form for our blog. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeby.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so looking at our blog here, we're coming right along. I want to look today at the registration form. So people that sign up as new users. And if you look here, when people sign up as a new user for your blog or for whatever, they have a username, password, and then a password confirmation. But if you remember, if we go back to our main page here, we see this Bob Elder, and that's a first name and a last name, but the registration form doesn't have fields for first name and last name or email address. We can also get email addresses. We've been entering these first names and last names and email addresses on our Django admin section. Remember way back at the beginning of the course, we set up that Django admin section. We've just been manually adding the first and last names there. So that works at the beginning, but eventually you want to extend out this form to have those other fields and really any other fields you want. We're not going to talk about adding other fields in this video. Maybe we'll talk about that later. In this video, we're just going to talk about adding that first name, last name, and that email address field to this registration form. And we'll also bootstrapify this so that it looks nicer, like we've done for some of the other forms as well. So, all right, let's head over to our code here and remember how our project is set up. We have the blog, which is like most of our stuff. But we also have this members directory. And this is the directory that holds the authentication and the signing up, logging in, logging out and that sort of thing. And inside of here, we have a models.py file that doesn't have anything. And you'll notice we don't have a forms.py file. But on the page itself, we're obviously we've got forms here, right? So if we want to change this form, how do we do it? Well, we actually need to create a forms.py file. So let's go do that real quick. Let's head over to our members directory, right click and create a new file. And let's go file save as, and we want to call this forms.py. Now we have a forms.py in our the blog directory, right? If we look at it here, it's got our post for posting blog posts and editing blog posts and things like that. But you know, this is registration stuff. So we can't use that same file we need to use a file in this directory. So what do we need in here? Well, if we look at our views.py file for our member section, we have this user register view and the form we're using, we've called it user creation form. So we need to modify that user creation form, which doesn't actually exist anywhere except for in the Django authentication backend thing, right? This auth thing that we looked at several videos ago. So let's head back up to our forms.py file and we need to import that. So let's go from django.contrib.auth.forms. We want to import and then just paste in that user creation form. Now we also need to create, uh, we also need to import our user model, the, the model that keeps track of all the users, right? So let's go from django.contrib.auth.models. We want to import user. And we've played with this user model a little bit in the past on our view pages where we added username and pass or where we added first name and last name and email address. And then finally, we want to from Django import forms. So now we just need to create a class. Let's go class. And I'm going to call this sign up form. Maybe capitalize this just for good measure. And then we need to pass in our user creation form, right? And now we just need to define the fields that we want to add to this thing. It already has, like we can see here, it already has the username and the password and then the password confirmation. We want to add the email address, the first name and the last name. So we can do that just like anything. We could go email and then this is going to equal forms dot email field. And then that's good. And then we also want to add the first name. And that is forms.carfield. So we've looked at car fields before. And here we can give this if we want a max underscore length of, I don't know, 100, 100 characters. And then I'm just going to copy this whole thing and then add this as last name. Now we also need to come down here, like sometimes we have to do, and create a, a meta class. 
And then we want, need to tell it what model to use. So we want to use our user model, obviously. And here we have to sort of uh, declare the fields we're going to use, right? So we want username. And username is just obviously this username, right? And next we want first name. And then just separate all these with commas. Last name. We want email. Oops quotation marks, we want email. And then we also want password one, and password two. And password one and password two are just what Django names these two guys here. And if you're not sure, you can always view these page source here, and just kind of look through here and see what they've been named. So here, name username, name password one, and name password two, right? Okay. So that looks good. So we could save this. Now we've just created this sign up form and we inherited from user creation form. So I'm going to copy this. And if we head over to our views.py file, we're saying, hey, for our form class, use the user creation form. But we don't want to use that anymore. Now we want to use the sign up form. And then we need to import sign up form. So up here at the top, let's go from dot forms, import sign up form. Okay, so let's save this and make sure your server is running. Ours is. And now we can head back over here and hit reload. And I have absolutely forgotten something. So let's head over here, control C to break out of here. And we didn't add fields, we absolutely did add fields. So probably forgot to save it. Ah, fields needs to be plural. Go ahead and save this. And let's now try this again. Boom, hit reload. And all right, so now we've got username, first name, last name, email, password. Now, if we try to just put some gibberish, we get an angry red box, because this is an email field. So it has to look like an email address, right? So that's interesting. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now this will work. But this is kind of ugly, right? So now we want to kind of bootstrapify this. And if we look at our code here, and let's head back over to the blog and our forms.py file there. Just to re refresh your memory, we created this widgets thing. And then in each of these, for each of our forms, we added adders with class form control. And that's what Bootstrap uses to bootstrapify forms, this form control class. Well, we can't actually do this sort of thing with our forms.py file. It just doesn't quite work. Instead, we need to do something a little bit different. We need to take what sort of these things are. So for instance, I can just copy this. And now some of them, these three things we can add right here. So we can go widget equals and then forms dot email input. And then we could pass that in. And we could just paste in that thing right there. So adders class form control, why email input for this one? Well, because this is an email field. And remember in our old forms file, the, the format here was text input, text input, a select box for select boxes, text area for boxes. Well, for email, it's email input, right? So basically, I'm just copying this whole thing, just like this, and just pasting it in here with a widget equal. So here we could do a comma and do the same thing widget equals But over here, I'm gonna head back over to our forms.py file. And let's just grab one of these forms text input. This is just an input box. So it'll work copy all of this and paste that in. And then let me just copy all of this again. And paste it in there for the second one. Okay, so now if we save this, there, I got an extra one of those there accidentally. So let's make sure all of these things line up. So Oh, no, we do need that there. But we need one here and we need one here. Okay, so that error there goes away. All right, so we're looking good now. Okay, so let's save this. Now these are just three of them, but we can come back here and hit reload to see and boom, we see these have been bootstrapified. Right. But what about the username and the passwords? Well, we can't do that right here because those aren't listed there, right? So what we have to actually do is come down here and do a little bit of voodoo and create another function. And it needs to line up with this class inside of here. So it's inside of our main class. And we can go define space underscore underscore init underscore underscore. 
And then we want to pass in self, like we often do with these sort of little internal functions. And then we also want to pass our args and quarks, args. And we've kind of looked at these a little bit in the past. Check the playlist if you're interested. Orgs and quarks. And this is a function. And make sure this has been tabbed over, not spaced over. Then we hit enter. Okay, so here we want to go super. And we want to pass in our signup form. And also self. And then we want to go dot init. Well, dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And again, pass in our args and quarks. So we can just copy this. All right. And now under here, for each of the fields we want to do, we can go self dot fields and then whatever that one is. So let's go username. And then dot widget dot adders. And then we want to pass in a class. What class? Well, we want to set this equal to form dash control. All right, so I can copy each of these and let's paste this in two more times. And we want to just do the same thing for password one. And then this one will be password two. So okay, look through here. Ah, this adder should be adders. All right, go ahead and save this and come back here and hit reload and boom. Here we go. We've got now nice, nice bootstrapified forms. And that's all there is to it. Now, we've been dealing with widgets. If you want to head over to the Django documentation page and learn more about widgets, you can. This is uh, docs.djangoproject.com forward slash en forward slash 3.0 forward slash ref forward slash forms forward slash widgets. So you can check that out. And you can see this is a pretty big page. There's all kinds of stuff you can learn. Uh, the different types of input boxes. Like here we have email input that we just used. All the different ones of those. Uh, all kinds of interesting stuff you can read. If you're interested more of why we're doing some of these things. And you could sort of see if we come back here, this looks a lot different. But basically, we're doing the same thing, right? We're adding a widget, we're giving an adders of a class form control, just like up here, we're using a widget, giving it adders with a class of form control, we just for this particular time, we have to do this weird sort of init function. That's just how you do it with the Django, or at least the easiest way I've ever found to do it with the Django form from the auth system, right? When you're using these auth forms, right? So normally with a forms.py file, we do it the old way just by defining our widgets like this. But you know, like I said, we're dealing with this auth model. And so it just uh, it's a little bit different. So now we can come back over here and let's close this out. And let's say uh, Steve, Steve's or Steve 41. Steve's first name is Steve. And let's call him Steve Elder. And that's Steve at elder.com. His password is whatever. And we can register. And let's see, Steve 41. Let's log in. Let's create a blog post real quick. Steve. Steve. <laughs> Coding. This is Steve's. Wow. First post. If we post, boom, we see Steve Elder is on there. So we know our first name and last name uh, works. We can assume that the email address worked too. Uh, we just don't have it anywhere listed. And we're good to go. Very cool. So go ahead and log out. So that's how you modify this register form with first name, last name and email address. You can add anything you want. You can add phone number, physical address, anything. And maybe we'll talk about that. If people are interested, let me know how to extend this even further by adding your own custom things to the database for the auth system. It's a little tricky, but not too bad. We can talk about that if you want. Uh, but uh, otherwise, yeah, pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps out the channel. I really appreciate it, guys. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.